Hi everyone, welcome to the Mechanics and Materials 1 channel. This is Burak Görmüş and in this video I will be explaining how can we implement finite element method in order to analyze planar truss structures and obtain deflection and reaction forces as well as the stress value for each truss element. In order to understand the analysis procedure for truss structures, let's start with examining bars. Bars are rigid structures that can be characterized with two nodes, as you can see on the slide. Besides, they are assumed to be subjected to axial forces, and as a result of this, they are either in compression or tension. After giving this brief introduction about the bars, let's talk about how can we mathematically express the deflection when they are subjected to axial forces. If we assume that a bar has a constant area and Young's modulus, we can express the deflection throughout its length with the differential equation that you can see on the right bottom. This is a second order differential equation and this is our governing differential equation. While solving problems with finite element method, we follow a simple route. The first step is to obtain our strong form and the strong form here is our differential equation that we talked about. Our second step is to convert the strong form into a weak form by expressing the differential equation using integrals. Subsequently, we need to approximate the unknown displacement function. While solving truss problems, we make the assumption that the displacement values can be linearly approximated along the element. After this step, we perform numerical integrations and obtain the element stiffness matrix value. Let's look at the element stiffness matrix concept and how can we use it in detail. The element stiffness matrix can be expressed as the matrix given at the left bottom for a bar subjected to axial forces F1 and F2. If it's our element stiffness matrix for an element, we can express the relation between the displacement and force as shown here, which basically looks like a, which basically looks like the extension of a spring when it is applied to axial forces F1 and F2. The important thing you need to realize is that the displacement for each node are only along the length of the bar. Therefore, we should express this equation in a different way using the displacement and force values in the global x and y axis. In order to achieve that, we should employ the transformation matrix concept. Let's start with obtaining the transformation matrix. In this slide, you are basically seeing the you are basically seeing a two coordinate systems that need to be transformed into another. In our case, the coordinate system in blue needs to be converted into the coordinate system in green so that we can express everything using global xy coordinate system. To achieve that, let's take unit vectors along x and y for each coordinate system and we can express the transformation equations as shown here. As a result of employing this equation, we can express the force transformation by using the transformation matrix in yellow. We can perform the same thing for nodal displacements too. Let's start combining the concept of this transformation matrix with the equations explaining the relationship between the force and displacement in local coordinate system. If we assume that our bar sits horizontal on the coordinate system, we can say that force vector in local coordinate system is equal to k0 multiplied by the displacement vector in local coordinate system. But what is k0 equal to? Let's find out. If we use the stiffness matrix as shown here, we can basically express the relation between the displacement and the forces. For example, fx prime for node 1 is equal to the k multiplied by ux prime for node 1 minus k multiplied by ux prime for node 2 and k here is equal to ea over l. You may observe that actually this formulation leads to the same equation that is mentioned 
for a system in its local coordinate system. Now, the last step is to convert everything expressed in global xy coordinate system. As said, f prime is equal to k0 multiplied by u prime. As you can see on the left, f prime is equal to the transformation matrix multiplied by f, and u prime is equal to the transformation matrix multiplied by u, and as a result, we obtain this equation. Before proceeding, the one important feature about the transformation matrix is that the inverse of the transformation matrix is indeed equal to its transpose. Hence, by multiplying the equation from left ends with the inverse transformation matrix, I mean the transpose of the transformation matrix, because they are the same thing, we can obtain this equation. Therefore, indeed, we manage to express everything in global coordinate system. If we say the stiffness matrix is equal to the transpose of transformation matrix multiplied by k0 and transformation matrix itself. As you can observe here too, everything here is a global coordinate system and we just derive it from the local force and displacement equation and we employ the concept of transformation matrix. So, in short, we can say that our element stiffness matrix is this 4x4 four four matrix as shown here in yellow while analyzing the deformation of a truss. As you may observe, we started with the deformation of a bar which was only along its length and we ended up with a system in which we can apply a force in both x and y axis and obtain the deflection values for each node again in both x and y axis. After expressing the stiffness matrix, now it is time to understand the planar stress structures better. Planar stress structures are basically a symbol of the structural members whose stiffness matrix is obtained by employing the idea of transformation matrix as discussed. One more note about planar stress structures is that the elements are two force members. So for the system on the left, we have six nodes and each node has its two unknowns in x and y axis. Therefore, our global stiffness matrix should be 12 by 12. In order to analyze the structure on the left, we should note that we have eight elements and each of them has a 4 by 4 local stiffness matrix. And each values in these matrices need to be put in our 12 by 12 global stiffness matrix so that we can assemble our geometry. The MATLAB GUI that is created handles this assembly procedure and find the unknown displacement values at the nodes. Besides, we can obtain reaction forces. Lastly, it is also possible to obtain stress values for each element. Therefore, in the next video, I will explain the MATLAB GUI that can be used to analyze planar truss structures. So, see you in the next video.